This is me at 15 years old. I wasn't happy with the way my body looked. I wasn't happy with the way it looked in the mirror. I wasn't happy with the way it looked in photos or videos. I would literally contemplate whether I was gonna take off my shirt or keep it on whenever I went swimming. I was so insecure about my body. I was insecure mostly about my love handles. I'd watch videos on guys with mohawks and they'd be like, how to get rid of love handles in two minutes or less. And then it'd be some weird video where they're doing like some side crunch thing that doesn't even work and it would just waste my time. So I got sick of the way my body looked and I decided to make a difference for myself. I stopped watching those how to get rid of love handles in two minutes or less videos and I started going to the gym I started making a difference and this is my physique now I'm 17 years old and I'm turning 18 in one month and I'm so proud of where I am right now if I never made the change at the beginning I'd be stuck in the same place but now I could teach you on how to get that body as a teenager and I'm gonna go through exactly step by step on what I did to achieve that body Step one is determining the goal. Your goal is to build an aesthetic body. An aesthetic body is a body like Christian Bale's in American Psycho. This guy looks like he's sculpted by Michelangelo. He looks like a Greek god. He looks amazing. Look at that. He's shredded. His arms look crazy. The guy looks amazing. Or another example is Brad Pitt from Fight Club. The guy looks amazing. He's got a physique women will love and men will respect. And you don't get this just from lifting weights. If you just lift weights and you don't train for aesthetics, then you're just gonna become like a mass monster. You're not gonna look as good as you'd want to be. We want to look as best as we possibly can be. That's what aesthetics is. So in other words, we wanna look like Greek gods, superheroes, and the people portrayed in Hollywood movies. Before I dive into this, I want to remind you of where I started. I started by doing push-ups and pull-ups in my garage. It does not take Superman to have the transformation I had. You'll have a better transformation than me because I'm going to teach you all the mistakes I made and you're going to have it in less time than me. And remember, if you do not start today, then you will never start. Make that change now so you can build your body. If you don't, the only person that will suffer is your future self. If I had to list the muscle groups in order of importance for an aesthetic body, I'd go abs, shoulders and back, chest, biceps and triceps, forearms, and then quads. I put the abs as first because it's one of the most aesthetic things. Everyone knows what abs look like, and you tried getting them before. Everyone wants abs because it looks good, even females. The thing is training abs just as a muscle is that the upper abs are pretty well made as soon as you get shredded and you can see them. It's that the lower ab doesn't pop as much. If you want to get the most bang for your buck, it's to train the lower part of your abs. Second is the shoulders and the back. I said it like that because it's like neck and neck with the abs of most aesthetic. It creates that upside down Dorito effect that you want. This is done by having bigger shoulders, more muscular shoulders. The more muscular your shoulders are, the smaller your waist looks because it makes you look wider. As well, with the wider your back is, it gives you that V taper and it just, it's like an illusion. Even if you do have a big blocky waist, the bigger your back and the bigger your shoulders are, it will look even smaller to have that good proportion V taper and look like a superhero and a Greek god. So specifically for the back, we want to train the middle lats. The middle lats and train all parts of your back but the middle lats are the most important they create that kind of cobra effect that looks like a dorito as well as for the shoulders we want to train the side delts the side delts are trained through lateral raises and that middle back is trained more from lat pull downs or from barbell rows Third is the chest. The chest is like one of the most prominent muscles. Like you could see it in a shirt. You could see if someone has a well made chest. It's because it looks masculine. And the thing is with an aesthetic body, you want to target more the upper chest because that's what makes it look like a plate of armor. That would, that's the masculine look we're going for, the aesthetic look. Specifically for upper chest, train it by doing incline barbell or dumbbell bench and that will create that upper chest that plate of armor look. Next is the biceps and the triceps. The biceps and the triceps, I don't really have to explain it to you, they just make your arms look muscular. But the thing is, you want to train your biceps and not neglect them. Because if your triceps overturn and like overtake your arm, it doesn't look as aesthetic. 
you want to train your biceps maybe not a little bit more but train it with more emphasis than you would your triceps and you do not want to neglect your biceps because that's what creates that model looking arm triceps create mass because it takes up more of your arm but biceps create that model looking big meaty claw next is the forearms they're one of the most important muscle groups because people see that the most when the, you wear a shirt people see your forearms the thing is i made the mistake by listening to people on youtube talking about oh just hold the weight really hard bro and you'll get bigger forearms no dude that shit did not work bro do not neglect your forearms please please don't make the same mistake i made train your forearms directly it is not sexy to have a body that has big arms big chest and then tiny ass forearms it looks goofy and you look small in shirts for the forearms specifically there's not many exercises to target them but just do forearm curls and it'll hit it pretty good you want to just imagine this as another muscle group and really take it seriously do not make the same mistake i made and lastly is the quads. We want to create good looking quads so it's proportionate with our body. An overdeveloped upper body does not look as aesthetic as a good overall built body. The quads really give you that look. As well as honorable mention, I only started doing this recently, is that training your neck. Look at this photo I showed right now. Look at the guy to the left, right? His neck is small, bro. Small neck. He looks goofy, right? And the guy to the right, same person, he's got big neck. This is Chad looking neck, big guy, right? You want to train your neck. And I do that by doing neck curls, but be careful and put a shirt on your face so you don't get acne and stuff like that. A muscle group I forgot to mention is the traps. The traps, I didn't think they were aesthetic at first. I was editing this video and I was really looking at the traps and I believe more of the wide shoulders is more aesthetic, but I was really thinking about it and well-defined traps look very aesthetic. It's because it connects to like your neck. It's seen in shirts, people see like anything from the collarbone up is really like a muscle group that you could work on. It's a big benefit to you because everyone will see it plus it makes your back look aesthetic plus it makes the front look you look more muscular not like beefy but just you look defined though i didn't mention all the body groups you must train all of them still you can't have some small ass calves or have some really tiny traps we must train all muscle groups but those were the most important of building an aesthetic body now that we went through all the muscle groups i must explain how your weight's gonna work so the whole point of your weight is that we want to build more muscle and then get shredded build more muscle get shredded build more muscle get shredded and we want to be at a higher weight every single time so first maybe you start at 140 then you build muscle okay you're like 170 then you cut down maybe you're like 160 build more muscle like it's like a pyramid it's like a more like a stair step just going dunk, 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 dunk. to do this you must determine where you are with your body number one is skinny number two is skinny fat that's where i was and number three is fat clarification i don't really like using the word fat it just sounds offensive but for the sake of this video it's i'm gonna have to label that because we're making a change you're not gonna be fat for long you're not gonna be skinny fat for long you're not gonna be skinny for long these are only short-term labels and then we're gonna all be aesthetic so if you're skinny you're gonna be required to bulk up if you're fat then you're gonna be required to cut but if you're skinny fat, this is where I was, and the majority of you are in this place. It's that you look skinny with the shirt on, but as soon as you take a shirt off, you look fat, like you're chubby, just, it's, it doesn't look good. So the mistake I made was when I was skinny fat, I decided to cut. I didn't bulk. The thing is, when you're first starting out and lifting weights, you have these things called newbie gains. Newbie gains is when you're first going into lifting and you this is the time you gain the most amount of muscle out of the whole period of time you're lifting weights. Even people five years in can't build as much muscle as you in this time span because newbie gains your body's like oh shit let's pack on muscle let's get big bro so the mistake i made was cutting cutting you basically you're losing a little bit of muscle only a tiny portion but you're cutting down and you can't you're not building as much muscle so we want to take advantage of those newbie gains if i could go back in time i would tell myself to bulk instead of cut and for those of you who are fat 
when you cut down after your cut down is when you bulk up and one piece of advice is do not main gain please do not main gain as a beginner do not listen to greg Doucette of him talking about main gaining that got me literally nowhere i was like on a flat line where i didn't gain any muscle and i was kind of i was like where the muscle at after i was lifting for like three months straight or more than, actually it was more than that and i just didn't see any results so to build muscle progressive overload is key progressive overload is really in an example it looks like this with the cows and this guy carrying the cow so the cow gets bigger and he gets more muscular and muscular and muscular so progressive overload is lifting weights but lifting heavy weights in the area of 5 to 15 reps reps are repetitions and they are the amount of time you actually like do the muscle like example you do one bicep curl that's one rep and you want to have it in the 5 to 15 repetition of you going to failure or near to failure the reason for this with the weights is that once you get back in the gym if you could do to 20 reps you need to put the weight up that is what progressive overload is it's going into the gym every single time and putting the weight up or going slower on your form so that you'll build the muscle and hit it harder in some type of way you have to track this because if you don't track it then you'll see no progress and you will forget unless you could just remember what you did last week and then you're good as well as when you're actually doing the exercise there's this thing called the eccentric and the decentric movement so most of the exercises you do you want to go slow in the eccentric for example bicep curls so you go up that's the decentric and then when you go down that's the eccentric and you want to go slow on that really slow because that's where you really feel the muscle fibers there's this thing called mind muscle connection or it's where you're kind of like meditating with your muscles and you want to focus exactly on the muscle group you're doing this will build the most amount of muscle this will get you the most bang for your buck with progressive overload and mind muscle connection on going slow with the eccentric movement you'll be bound to build muscle really really quick and the thing is with the 5 to 15 rep range do not do planet fitness fail compilation type form you don't want to look like this guy or look like this guy that's how you injure yourself if you injure yourself in the gym you're setting yourself back so many things days and so much time whereas if you just don't injure yourself you're gonna build more muscle plus that just hurts your joints and when you get like 60 you'll probably feel like when the rain is coming and stuff like that we do not want that we want a good healthy body an aesthetic body so what i'm not gonna do in this video is give you a weightlifting program the reason is you could literally search that up yourself there's millions all over the internet and it'd be a disservice if i gave you a weightlifting program because if i didn't give you the background information and you didn't pay attention to the background information you would be so lost and you'd get no muscle building or have an aesthetic physique none of that would be possible the thing is i'm not gonna lead you in the dark though i'm still gonna tell you stuff on the weight training program so for the weight training program when you do get one is that you do not do a bro split bro split is you only train one muscle a week but the important thing is to train the muscles two times a week it is important because it's perfect it, you get to rest and then you train it like a different day and that gives you the most bang for your book what i did at the beginning of my weightlifting is that i did more of not like a bro split but it was like a two-day bro split it would just be like different exercises and stuff so i'd do like arms chest and i'd do like legs a different day with other stuff and it just it literally took me up to like three hours it was terrible you want to be in the gym for around one to one in about like an hour and 30 because that really it sets you in a good way because if you're in there more than that you're not pushing yourself hard enough and really after like the second exercise you do the second set you'll be like destroyed dude so do not make my mistake of going to the gym for three hours it's not manly it's not masculine it's stupid go to the gym for one hour and to up to one hour and 30 minutes so you could get the most bang for your book if you're really interested in what weightlifting program i do i do the jeff nippard push pull legs program and i kind of modified it but i'll just Put the link in the description of the actual video and a piece of advice is to anyone new lifting do not be embarrassed of taking progress pictures what i regret the most is that i do not have a lot of progress pictures i only have really the progress pictures are the pictures i've shown in this video and it's really a shame to not be able to look back at where i was i have a few videos but not that much and i really recommend from the bottom of my heart to take those progress pictures you'll smile when you look back as well as the fact that you could just track your progress easily that way whether you 
getting bigger, whether you're getting smaller. It's a great benefit to you. Now do nutrition slash recovery. Your nutrition slash recovery is arguably twice as important than the actual weightlifting in the gym. The reason this is, is because when you lift weights, you're breaking down muscles. You're having micro tears in your muscles. So your muscles literally micro tear inside and then afterwards they build bigger. And the only way they build bigger is by you getting more sleep and you eating healthy and you doing good recovery. I'm not saying you have to eat stuff you don't like and go on keto, but I am saying you have to eat clean and eat foods that you like. So to have proper nutrition slash recovery, we have to discover what your maintenance is. Your maintenance is the amount of calories you burn per day. We need to know this because calories in, calories out is basically how you build muscle, how you bulk, how you cut. It is like the bread and butter. To calculate your maintenance, go to the link in the description and enter your height and your body weight, and then it will give you your maintenance calories for the day. On top of your maintenance, you should aim for one gram of protein per pound of body weight to make sure that you have proper recovery and good nutrition for your muscles to build. For those of you in the skinny to skinny fat category, you are then going to go on a bulk. A lean bulk is eating clean, not eating like poop, and gaining one pound to two pounds of muscle per week. You must track your weight per week because I found if you do not, you move very slowly towards your goal. I did that for a good majority of time. I think it was almost almost four months I didn't track and I literally was stayed in the same place maybe gained two pounds and it just it was bozo material why'd I do that so when you take care of your nutrition as well you also have to track your calories and the amount of protein you eat this is very easy you could just like read the labels and remember and be in the ballpark that that worked for me when I was cutting but not really when I was bulking so when you bulk you have to do this app this is called my fitness pal and you can literally scan the barcodes, it's really easy and it gives you the calories, it gives you everything. So for your lean bulk, you wanna max go about 600 calories above your maintenance because the muscles do not need that much calories more to build more muscle. Instead, it will just build it to fat if you go on example like a dirty bulk. If you go a thousand above, then you're, it's just gonna go straight to fat. We don't want that. We wanna stay as lean as possible while bulking, but it's inevitable to gain fat. That is the sad truth. As well as those who are on the skinny fat journey and are bulking, dude, I'm proud of you. You made a tougher decision than I. Make that decision, dude, because I did a cut and I really regret it because I could have had more muscle now. It's like, you gotta look at it like this, do like analysis, whether do you wanna have a skinny body in like a couple of months or do you want more muscle and just a little bit more fat you could take that like you'll people will see you you're more muscular and you'll gain more in the future now for the cut whether you just bulked or you're on the journey of being fat the cut has always been easier for me than a bulk but for a cut you must set your maintenance and drop it by 500 calories maximum because the thing is if you drop your calories a lot then there's your body goes into this thing which is like survival mode if your body goes into survival mode it no longer eats the fat away it is eating your muscle away and we do not want that we want to keep as much muscle as possible and in this area of when you cut and you lower your maintenance calories then you need to make sure you're on the one gram of protein like like balls on it like you know there's no exceptions because then if you don't have the protein your muscles kind of like go away and you don't have a lot of muscle as soon as you're done cutting we want to keep as much as mu muscle as possible and be shredded as hell at the end and for a cut if you tracked all your calories and it's maintenance maintenance below but you're still hungry at night it's okay to be hungry when you go to bed just remember that the thing is check the skill that you're not moving too fast because if not you might have to raise your calories a bit so you don't go into that survival mode those of you who are teenagers and are skinny fat and decided to cut like me just remember that if you're a teenager that your hormones are going like moving a lot and the thing is when you cut you kind of mess up all your hormones because they're they'd get messed from you cutting they're like yo where the food go like you you might get severe acne gynecomastia where your teddy looks weird and is all puffy and there's a lot more things to go with that and mood swings as well but if you're in the fat category you'll be fine from cutting because the hormones in you sadly already are kind of a little messed up from all the excess fat and fat creates estrogen we do not want estrogen we want more testosterone in our body and as you cut you'll feel fine and you'll be good 
this is as long as you cut healthy and you don't to go into survival mode if you go into survival mode all your hormones are broken up so just do this healthy if you're in the fat category now for recovery sleeping for eight hours is essential but this is one tip you must remember it's that if you're in bed for eight hours and you turn off your phone and you set an alarm for exactly eight hours you're not going to get eight hours sleep you're probably going to get six or seven because the thing is, the amount of time you're in bed doesn't equal to the amount of time that you get sleep. And sleep is so important for muscle growth because when you sleep, you grow the most. It's because your muscles are asleep and it's able to build those fibers without you moving around. So we want to aim for about eight and a half hours to nine hours with your eyes closed and you in quote unquote sleep. As well as the topic of recovery, remember to listen to your body. If your body says, oh, poop my arms gonna fall off please don't work out anymore dude like stop take a break take a little rest maybe take like a day or two off and see how it is you have to read your body as well as your body might lie to you sometimes or this is mostly your brain the amount of times my mind didn't want me to go to the gym is especially more than the times i actually wanted to go to the gym in my mind it's because it's uncomfortable to go to the gym and work out but the thing is you have to realize that's your monkey brain talking to you make that change and go to the gym every single time i went to the gym when i didn't want to i've never regretted it it just built me more and built me more and build me into a better person the thing is when you go to the gym when you don't want to in your mind you'll feel proud you'll feel like you challenge yourself and that is one of the most important portions of weightlifting, challenging yourself by progressive overload and you progressive overload your mind to go to the gym when it doesn't want to. Now, this is the start of your journey. If you do not start now, your future self will suffer. If you do not start now, you never will. Don't waste the time that you spent watching this video. This is your calling to build your body that you always wanted, an aesthetic body that women love and that men respect. I went in, I was in the same place as you. I was literally in the same place as you. And here I'm making a video on how to build a body. I want you to be in my place to teach your friends how to build a body or just have a body and be proud of it. You don't even have to teach anyone. Just make your future self proud and do this thing. Just build it now, because if you don't, you never will. Make your future self proud.